Well, it's a disparity for sure, an uncomfortable one for many, and yet this gap seems to keep widening. Nomi Prince is the author of It Takes the Pillage, Behind the Bailouts, Bonuses, and Backroom Deals from Washington to Wall Street. Uh, Nomi, as always, so many things to discuss regarding uh, the growing inequality in America. Let's start with one of the most American things there is, though, home ownership. Last year, some record-breaking numbers in terms of home foreclosures and repossessions. One million, according to Realty Track, and next year, analysts predict that number of home repossessions will go up to 1.2 million. What do these numbers tell us? Um, well, they tell us, first of all, about the massive disconnect between things like uh, in Washington paying itself and the banking system um, and not trying to fundamentally alter what's going on for housing for most of the citizens that are faced with uh, defaulting and losing their homes, and, and it's not just even individual citizens; it's their families. You know, it's relatives. It's a knock-on effect, and and that that still has yet to be um, addressed in any way that changes those numbers from continuing to increase. Next year, with this increase um, suggested, up to 1.3 million homes um, to be foreclosed upon, that, that's, that's going to be three years after a massive bailout to the very banks that are doing the foreclosing. Um, so so there's, there's a massive problem with that. Um, and also, uh, most people who even try to modify their mortgages to keep from being foreclosed upon um, are, are in massive fights with the banks that they have mortgages with uh, to try and even get those through and there's no federal help to push that. There's no requirement that makes banks have to address those concerns of borrowers. But are you, su are you surprised at all? I mean, certainly these numbers, the, the one million uh, repossessed homes, I think it was 2.9 uh, million foreclosures this year. I mean, we keep hearing that the economy is in a recovery. Were you surprised at all to learn that, uh, you know, these experts project that the number will actually go up and not go down or at least stabilize? Well, the thing is, it's a, the question is, who is the recovery for? And when we talk about a recovery, we meaning most of the mainstream media, what that actually means. And, and what it means is banks are recovering, corporates are recovering their profits, the stock market has recovered its value from the lowest points after the bailouts and in the beginning of 2009. And all those things have, have recovered quite nicely. What has never recovered and what is still recessed or even depressed is the job situation in the United States, the way in which uh, loans for homes have gone in the face of the borrowers of those homes, not just because the prices of homes have collapsed, but because of all the shady types of loans that were given to begin with, because of the massive push that the banks did to get those loans to be created to begin with, that they are now ignoring uh, any form of responsibility in, in having created them. And so it, it really doesn't surprise me. If, if you continue to look at these numbers, we've had 7 million homes foreclosed upon since the beginning of the recession. Now, I consider the recession to still be happening. I don't think it ended. Ben Bernanke, who runs the Federal Reserve, who's done nothing to stop anything with respect to real homeowners, um, seems to think that there, there has been or there is being a, a slow recovery, but, but, but there really isn't. And as long as people aren't finding quality jobs that can afford them to keep the expenses that they had, as long as the housing market remains what it does, as long as the banks refuse to even negotiate um, in a timely manner, in a fair manner, in a respectful manner with borrowers to help them on their mortgages, um, this, this, these foreclosure numbers are going to continue. And next year we're talking about 1.3 million versus a 1 million this year. That's homes repossessed. So 2.9 million homes in foreclosure, those are going to start to be repossessed too this year and into next year. And that cycle will continue because banks have no incentive or legal requirement or, or anything um, pushing upon them to change it. Well, let's move on um, to some of the big companies. Nomi, I know you've written a lot about these. I want to talk about J.P. Morgan. Now, analysts predict fourth quarter profits at this investment bank would hit about uh, $3.9 billion. That sounds like a lot to me. Um, guess what? J.P. Morgan exceeded expectations and raked in $4.8 billion in profits. How are these big banks able to pull in so much profit when most people, other than, of course, federal workers, as we just saw, um, can't even get a raise at their jobs? 
Um, because those banks are able to fund themselves at, at almost zero percent interest or a quarter of a percent interest. Um, banks in general, besides the, the massive amount of bailout and subsidization that they received and still received from the official bailout at the end of 2008 and 2009, continue to have open access to very, very, very cheap to almost zero cost money um, from the Federal Reserve. That's the relationship. I mean, the banks kind of are the Federal Reserve. The, the money is, is, is sort of uh, free-flowing between them. And that money is used for trading. That money is used as capital behind investment banking and so forth. Aside from that, there's no rules on banks, for example, to say, you know what, you can't charge 30% on credit cards because you know what, you're getting money from us at zero or 0.25%, or and that's, that's, that's heinous. Um, so, so what's happening, and J.P. Morgan is a perfect example, um, their, their profits were up 47%, um, and, and a portion, a significant portion of those profits came from sort of the fee-generating divisions, the ones that really take credit card holders or slap new fees onto checking accounts or, or don't give any form of meaningful interest on savings accounts because they're really hoarding uh, the money in for themselves. Or they're keeping it reserved at the Federal Reserve, and they're receiving interest on the money they're not giving, for example, to lend out. No, I mean, so there's a lot of ways in which banks, particularly the larger, most powerful banks like J.P. Morgan Chase, um, can make that kind of money. Individuals could do a lot better if they had access to uh, zero to 0.25 percent loans, or, or even if banks chose to pay decent interest rates for their savings or checking accounts, which of course banks won't do because they say rates are too low for them to do that, but they will slap on fees and, and high rates on credit and not negotiate mortgages and everything else. And that's how you can run a pretty profitable business. I suppose when you are the one making the rules for the game, you can do whatever you want. Uh, Nomi Prince, author of It Takes a Pillage, Behind the Bailouts, Bonuses and Backroom Deals from Washington to Wall Street.